Dr. Professor has been leading an unhealthy lifestyle for many years. High cholesterol, hypertension, and smoking. And by not addressing the cerebrovascular risk factors with the proper interventions earlier, she has steadily brought herself to this point, having a stroke in front of a classroom of sleepy, unenthused, and distracted students. It is important that any person suspected of suffering a stroke be urgently taken to the hospital for proper care and treatment. A stroke, or a cerebrovascular accident, CVA, refers to the abrupt symptoms associated with damage to the brain caused by abnormalities in its blood supply. It is very important to take immediate action. During a stroke, almost two million brain cells die every minute. Quick recognition facilitates fast treatment. Fast treatment can save brain cells. Fast treatment can save brain cells. To a bystander, a person having a stroke may be misinterpreted as an individual just looking confused. But this student was able to not only recognize the symptoms, but more importantly, act fast. Early EMS activation is important to a stroke patient's condition, and student one knew this. Based on their astute evaluation of Dr. Professor and ability to um, rapidly identify Dr. Professor as a candidate for thrombolytic therapy, she is being transported to a hospital identified as a comprehensive stroke center as opposed to a primary stroke center. A primary stroke center is a hospital that is capable of providing acute stroke care, including 24 hours availability of CT scan and interpretation in less than 25 minutes. In this type of facility, medical personnel are available 24-7 to see a patient suspected of stroke within 5 to 10 minutes of entering the door. 
A comprehensive stroke center has all these capabilities and has the capability as well as the expertise to manage complex strokes through the support of endovascular neurointerventionalists and neurosurgeons. Someone has a stroke every 40 seconds. Every year, about 795,000 people have a stroke in the U.S. About 600,000 of these are reported as first stroke events, and almost 200,000 will go on to have another. Stroke mortality varies considerably by race and sex. There is a striking disparity in stroke prevalence between different racial ethnic groups in the U.S. The overall prevalence of stroke among African Americans, multiracial persons, and Native Americans is higher than that among Hispanic Americans. In most age groups, men have a higher incidence of stroke, but more than half of total stroke deaths occur in women. The American Heart Association estimates that there are about 7 million stroke survivors in the U.S., many of whom require long-term care, making stroke a leading cause of serious long-term disability. The goal of this video is to educate you on all phases of acute stroke care provision so that by the end you will not be as panicked as the students, but instead know S-T-R-O-K-E, stroke. S, signs, the warning signs and symptoms of a stroke. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty, sudden numbness or weakness of the leg, sudden confusion or trouble understanding, sudden trouble seeing in one or both eyes, sudden trouble walking, dizziness, loss of balance or coordination, sudden severe headache with no known cause. T, time, the details of the golden hour. R, response, the responsibilities of all healthcare providers responding to a stroke in the emergency department. O, onset, healthcare providers need to know when the patient was last seen well. K, know about diagnostic studies used to evaluate a stroke patient. E, eligibility for tissue plasminogen activator, TPA. Time out! Jeez. Stroke management can occur in the empty-headed, careless way we've just seen. But taking care of a stroke patient is similar to a race car pulling into the pit during a race for refueling and new tires, repairs, or mechanical adjustments. Every crew member has a specific job to promptly return the race car back to the race. The same joint effort should exist in the ED when a stroke patient enters through the doors. Time is crucial and everyone has to know their roles to successfully treat the patient. So let's reset the clock and try this again. Time is key in determining treatment and in reducing risk complications associated with interventions. Suspected stroke patients presenting within three hours and in some cases four and a half hours of the onset of symptoms should be triaged on an emergent basis. However, it may be difficult in certain circumstances to establish an accurate timeline of when symptoms began. Thus, it is important to know the time the patient was last known to be well. Organized stroke care within the three-hour time frame has been shown to lead to a reduction in early mortality, neurological deficits, decreased length of hospital stay, and long-term institutional care. In following this, an in-hospital time interval known as the golden hour was developed to allow the stroke patient to be evaluated and treated with TPA in an expedient manner. When administered in a timely manner, TPA acts fast to quickly bust up a blood clot. The need to meet time objectives established by the golden hour guideline is best explained if we explore the 60 minutes in smaller intervals of 20. Upon notification of an incoming stroke patient, the unit clerk assures that the BAT team has been notified and BAT orders are placed in EMR. During the first 20 minutes, the assistant nurse manager is notified of a BAT patient and places the patient in the appropriate care area. His or her ultimate responsibility is to facilitate the patient's care communications by providing appropriate information to the receiving health care provider. 
The primary RN performs a rapid primary assessment of the patient and will undress the patient with the help of a secondary RN, if available, to properly expose the patient. This will facilitate clear communication between staff. Closed loop communication systems should be practiced by limiting access to the bedside and minimizing extraneous conversations to limit distractions. Immediately, the primary RN assures that the patient has two secure, working, large-bore IVs in each arm. Lab work is drawn and the blood is placed in a specific orange-labeled bat blood specimen bag. The primary ED tech supports the primary RN in this dynamic process by providing assistance with immediate care needs such as placing the patient on a cardiac monitor and continuous pulse oximetry. He completes the STAT point of care test and organizes bat blood bag. Within the first 10 minutes of the patient's arrival, the primary BAT MD introduces him or herself to the team and collaborates with the ED MD in the assessment and treatment of the stroke patient. EPIC orders for CT scans and other emergent diagnostic studies and tests are entered. Pertinent medical history is obtained, including information regarding the patient's last known time of being well, and a neurologic exam is performed to determine the extent of deficits and subsequently decipher the patient's NIH stroke scale score. Computed tomography, CT or CAT imaging, offers quick, detailed anatomical information about the brain that is used to help the BAT team determine if the potential of stroke exists. The type of vascular damage found on CT greatly influences the decision on whether TPA will be used. During the next 20 minutes, the treatment decision-making process begins. There are multiple treatment options for a stroke patient that simply cannot be determined with the flip of a coin. Will Dr. Professor receive intravenous TPA, have an interventional procedure, or be medically managed without thrombolytics? The different types of treatment options are weighed against the CT findings, the stroke type, and the time from onset, elevated blood pressure, and possible contraindications. In the interim, the patient returns to the ED for the completion of pending diagnostic studies, including an electrocardiogram and portable chest x-ray. A comprehensive nursing assessment is completed and information is attained from family members and the patient's primary physician to complement and complete the patient's known medical history. The BAT team reviews the CT imaging results and decides if further imaging is needed, specifically if a CT angiogram CTA, is needed. A CTA is a CT scan that focuses on the blood vessels of the head and neck, which carry blood to the different areas of the brain. The neuroradiologist will read the CT and CTA scan and confer with the BAT-MD. The BAT-MD will communicate this information with the ED and endovascular surgery attendings and the primary RN to determine the treatment plan for the stroke patient. Some exclusion criteria for TPA are conditions like severe hypoglycemia, blood glucose concentration at less than 50 mg deciliter, which might present with symptoms similar to stroke or conditions that elevate the risk of hemorrhage, such as significant head trauma or prior stroke in the previous three months, history of prior intracranial hemorrhage, intracranial neoplasm, arteriovenous malformation or aneurysm, recent intracranial or intraspinal surgery, active internal bleeding, heparin use within 48 hours, and an elevated activated partial thromboplastin time, APTT. There are some situations where extra caution is required in patients presenting between three to four and a half hours, such as advanced age, greater than 80, and severe stroke, NIHSS, greater than 25, for example. During the last 20 minutes, TPA is ordered and administered, if indicated, with the goal from the ED door to needle time being less than 60 minutes. The primary RN, with the assistance of the ED tech, reassesses the stroke patient, including a swallow screen and periodic neurological checks, and will complete and record vital signs every 15 minutes as per the EDMD's orders. The primary RN will be on one-to-one -one with the patient until the patient is transferred out of the emergency department. Patients given TPA will require admission to the intensive care unit, ICU, for close observation. Whoa, 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 whoa. By the way, administration of anticoagulant or antiplatelet therapy is not recommended for 24 hours after TPA until a follow-up CT scan does not show ICH. Learn something new every day.